My name is Corrado Puglisi. I'm a former hockey coach of Liberty University. I coached from 1994 to 1999 and I am from Toronto, Ontario. How I first came down to Liberty and Liberty Hockey, my um, friend of mine back home named Carl Kostick brought me, uh, he, he brought me down to Super Conference and I came down here for that with him and uh, we spent about four days here just doing workshops, uh, various things like that and uh, I had my first taste of uh, Liberty Campus and life on Liberty Campus and um, when it was all said and done I, I just had this feeling that uh, this was a place I was meant to come to. Because Canadian Thanksgiving and American Thanksgiving don't coincide, they were having a um, Canadian Thanksgiving banquet. So I go into the Vine Center and it's totally dark. There was just some peripheral lighting up around the top. And so I walk down across the, the playing floor and there's this guy, and the guy's probably in his 40s. And I said, hey, hey, you know, do, you, do you happen to know where the uh, Canadian Thanksgiving banquet is? He says, well, I'm looking for it too. And he says, you know, once we get out there, he said, I really want you to meet a, fr uh, a friend of mine that's come down here and gone to Liberty. He's a little bit of a, you know, an adult student. He's 26. And, uh, and, and that, that was my first time meeting Corrado. I, uh, I wasn't thinking about hockey. In fact, I, I didn't think hockey existed in this little area because back then it was much smaller, the school. And hockey just wasn't on my radar. And uh, I walked around campus one day and I, I saw signs for hockey, um, for games and um, I saw a bunch of players selling tickets and I remember going up to the, the ticket table where the players were selling the tickets and um, I introduced myself and uh, I told them that I, I'm a big hockey guy and I was involved in coaching hockey back home in Toronto and I wanted to do some, uh, some volunteering to get my hours on campus, my Christian service hours and I asked them if I could you know, help out and they asked me if uh, if I wanted to come to a game and be a coach behind the bench and help work the defense. And so that first year, 1994-95 season, I was the defense coach, assistant coach, whatever you want to call it. Again, it wasn't on my radar to be the head coach. I just, I just assumed that the person that was coaching at the time, Chris Halshaw, there was going to be another team. But I can remember starting the year out, um, I was engaged to be married and we were planning our wedding. I was in busy at school and the hockey team, again, was not on my radar. I didn't see anybody selling tickets. And when I asked somebody about the hockey team, they said that um, the hockey team didn't exist anymore. And I thought, oh, that's, that's too bad. And um, I didn't think much more of it. And it was January of 1995. Um, I received a phone call one night and it was uh, Andrew Barron, who was a, f a former player, and he introduced himself on the phone as a, a guy trying to put the team back together and wanting to get a season together of what's left over in the year. And he told me that in order for the team to exist, the faculty at the university said that they had to have a head coach. So he asked me if I would come for an interview. So I was interviewed by a bunch of players, and uh, they asked me if I wanted to be the head coach. And that's how it happened. I just said, yeah. In the beginning, it was growing pains because uh, you'd, when I took over as coach, I, you know, I really didn't, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. I didn't know who was going to come to tryouts. So back in those days, we had to put signs up all over campus, and um, we had a tryout. We had quite a few players uh, come to, come out to the tryout. We, uh, I got involved with the league. I, I made a few phone calls. I got the commissioner's name and. Uh, we, we were able to get a schedule together and play each team in the league two times. And you know what, it, like I said, it was growing pains. It was a lot of learning, uh, even for me. But the guys were great. Uh, we, we had a couple of Dr. Habermas players remaining with a lot of experience that helped me out in that first year. And again, it, it was a lot of fun. Just guys got to know each other. There was a, a, big, a great bond between the players. And um, yeah, we had a good experience that first year, especially going to the playoffs and the championship, uh, beating UNC in the finals, beating the University of Virginia in overtime in the semifinals, and um, yeah, we had a great time. I think by the time that, 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 that I actually came on, the team had kind of been stabilized. Because I think Corrado, one of the things he did, and he was the first and probably the only coach that's ever had to do this, is he's had to take a group of guys that really were just playing as a club, and he turned them into a team. And so, you know, initially when he got going, he had somebody 
that was uh, doing PA announcing down in Roanoke, and he said, you know what, I want you to come out and start being the PA announcer for our games. So the first two years prior to the 98-99 season, I went down and actually started as a PA announcer. And then Corrado approached me and he said, you know what, I really like to have an assistant coach and uh, I'll teach you what I need to know over the summer. I'm not from a hockey background, both my parents are chemists. And um, so that, that, I think that was really the start. We got along so well as friends that that was even augmented by our chemistry on the bench. And sometimes I knew what he was thinking before he even came down and talked to me and sometimes he knew what I was thinking before I came up and asked him because one of my defensemen was in the penalty box. So it was, uh, it was a fantastic experience. I coached uh, three more years and we made the playoffs every year. Um, we didn't go to the finals again, but we, we, were always, uh, we were always challenging. We were always playing tough games and, and uh, we were very competitive. Um, in my last year, uh, what happened was I, I, I got a job running hockey rinks for a company called DNR Development in Virginia and they were moving me around. So it became tougher to stay and coach Liberty Hockey when I was living far away. And um, my wife and I decided to start a family. So 1999 uh, was the year my son Chris was born. And it was probably the best year for me to say, you know, um, I'm, I'm gonna pack it in and, and turn the reins over to someone else. And so um, since then, we've moved back to Newmarket, Ontario. I, I stayed involved in hockey. I took a few years not coaching, you know, raising the little guy. Um, when he was old enough to start skating, I started coaching his team. And then we had a second child, another boy, and uh, coached his hockey. And so even up in, like right now, they're, six, they're 17 and 14. So I still coach them. And uh, like I said, we're, we're parenting our kids and uh, watching them grow. and coaching them and having a, having a lot of fun still. When I got the call, I, I didn't know what to make. I, I, you know, I, uh, I remember picking up the phone, I remember where I was, and it was, it was kind of weird because at first I thought, is this a practical joke or something? Because I, I heard a bunch of guys in the background and I didn't think about it. I didn't expect it. Um, I, I, I guess in some, some weird way, you know, yeah, I, I guess I did have a part in, in this, um, but I just never thought of it as, Hall of Fame status for the university. And so I, I think it is incredibly fitting that he is going into the Club Sports Hall of Fame. If you look at all three men's coaches right now, so you look at Kirk Handy, who was recruited by Corrado. You look at the Lowe's brothers, brought here by, you know, the, I, I think some of the efforts of Corrado. My brother and I getting into hockey was Corrado, and my brother's the Division Three coach. So I think I, I don't think it's a stretch of the imagination to go back and, and you know, if you look at the family tree of Liberty Hockey, I really think Corrado um, could, could be very well responsible for those three people. Um, you know, I'm not saying it being in the place that they're in, but uh, I, I think that they could trace their lineage back. But, um, you know, I think, I think that Corrado definitely has his pace and, and it is, uh, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be able to present him tonight. You know, it was so different back then on campus because, we, like I said, we didn't have all the resources that uh, I see around today. And uh, back then we never thought about it. We just, we just wanted to play and have a lot of fun and, and just get the job done. And my wife, uh, she was here, she helped me a lot. She did a lot of little things behind the scenes and she was very supportive. Uh, she came to just about every game. I think she only missed one or two. And uh, so she's, uh, she still supports hockey. She comes to every one of their games. And uh, my boys, they've been hearing about uh, Liberty Hockey at the dinner table growing up for years and years. And um, it's really exciting for me to be able to share this experience with them because now, I mean, for these guys, they can make the connection now to everything that my wife's always talked about at the dinner table. She would always tell them stories about little crazy things and I would tell stories. And they thought it was great, but now that they're here to sort of see it and witness it, it's a big deal.